Hello, everybody. It's episode 141 of the Whole Back Right Podcast. Nick is here. I'm here. Chat's here. It's sponsor time. Ready? Let's do it. VetDNA.com for all of your testing needs. Use code hashtag shit happens for $5 off the crypto panel. You can test all kinds of stuff. VetDNA.com. Cat stuff. Goat stuff. Chicken stuff. Dog stuff. Reptile stuff, amphibian stuff, turtle stuff. VetDNA.com. Thank you, Chad. Shane Kelly, small town exotics. He breeds ball pythons. Lever geckos a little bit. Lots of hognose, and he's getting into boas. He's he's a multi-species man, and he's on, on a mission. He will be... I haven't checked his morph market. There's probably something on there. Go to small town exotics morph market and buy a snake, please. Thank you, Shane. Robinson the Ball Python. She's a veteran women owned ball python breeding company. I don't have any big updates, no shows coming up, but check with her, follow her on Instagram to see what's going on. She's into mostly puzzle fun stuff. Puzzle fun, different combos. If you're into puzzle, you're into Bravo Zulu Ball Pythons. Thank you, Eileen. Justin Brill. He'll be at the Pacnoir's Hillsboro, Portland, Oregon show on April 20th and 21st. Stone Age ball pythons. He's a ball python breeder extraordinaire, and he has a very nice beard. And we love that about Justin. Thank you, Stone Age ball pythons. Uh, Andrew Powerhouse pythons. He will also be in Hillsboro on the twentieth and twenty first. He's got lots of ball pythons coming. Leopard geckos coming. Um, he's he's growing his operation. He's a go for cocoa provider for the Pacific Northwest, and he's got Stimpsons and all kinds of other stuff brewing. Thank you, Andrew. Everybody check him out. Buy a snake. Gray Family Snakes, they do it into like high-end VPI Xanthic DG Pied combo stuff. They're our Alabama family sponsor. We love them. I think they have some clutches from their VPI Xanthic clown coming up. Uh, so if you're into that and you want to start working on that, check out Gray Family Snakes. Thank you. And Chris and Venus Reptilia, he's our most multi-species uh, sponsor. He's got some ball python clutches, but all of his Tarahumaras, Costa Ricans, and Longicadas are looking juicy, ready to go. Should have some blood pythons. And he's into, uh, he has some leftover hypo clown double hats and visual hat stuff from last year. So if you're into hypo clown, check out Chris at BNS Reptilia. I did it. I did it, Nick. <laughs> Another sponsor. <laughs> oh my I get God. it. I get it. It's hard. I don't know why they pay me any money at all, frankly. <laughs> I, I I know the same. I mean, we have we have sponsors for the show too, and the amount of people that have reached out wanting it, like it. It's, I don't know why you're giving me money. <laughs> so how, well, let's start there. How did you pick how many sponsor spots to have? I don't even know. So we that, my my original idea was like to try to be different than like the traditional local show stuff. Uh, and obviously in ARBC, they do the sponsorships and all that. And uh, super shows do sponsorship. And I'm sure there's a couple of smaller shows that I'm not thinking of that do like sponsorship. But I was like, you know, I think sponsorships are really good way to partner with somebody in a show, all that kind of stuff. So we, we started talking around, we had talked to a few people and we're like, I don't know. I don't think you could ask more than 300 bucks for like the most, the highest sponsorship. And we were like, well, that's sort of, I mean, we want to have the advertising and everything go really strong. So we're like, that's sort of there. So we started out with three tiers. We did tier one. We should sort of have this backwards. We should probably have tier one be our top tier. And I think we might switch that around next time. But tier ones are lower. It's a hundred bucks. You get like your name on the back of the t-shirt and you get a logo somewhere around the show on banners. And then, um, yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's about it. You get on the t-shirt and that. And then tier two, you get a few different things. We switched it up at like halfway through. So like we, all of our tier two sponsors get a interview with Brian Cusco um, at the show. They get their logo on the back of the shirt. They get logos on some of our marketing stuff that went out. They get logos on like banners around the show, that kind of thing. And then they get on the website and then tier three, which was the highest. So we capped that. Uh, the way that we were like, we don't want to have tier three, our like main sponsors be overrun. We don't, we can't have 10 t- tier three sponsors. Cause it's like, why, why would I give you that? 
Like, why, what am I getting out of it? That's different. So, and we, mm-hmm. you know, most of our marketing doesn't look good if we have 15 plus people tagged on something like that would just look silly. So we, we cap that. I think we have six tier threes and one of them sort of like a, a hybrid tier two, tier three. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas they're, they're a very specifically local um, pet hotel is what they do. They take in animals for, vacation all that kind of stuff and it's a creature comforts pet hotel and i was like well i don't think like if we do move outside of colorado you want calls from other states being like hey will you take care of my my all my pets while i go on vacation and all that kind of stuff like you're gonna have to turn away calls from all these people so we kept that at three at six tier two i think we have 10 that we decided to sort of cap mm-hmm. it out because we, Brian, we don't want to overdo Brian's work while he's at the show. We don't want to make it so that that's invaluable as well. We, and we can't just, we can't send out flyers to all the pet shops in Colorado that have 25 sponsors on them as well. So mm-hmm. uh, we, we ended up being pretty crazy amount of people that wanted tier two and tier three. And I think we only have a few tier ones. Um, so everyone Doesn't was, that mean you're uh, uh, underpriced? Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, you said three hundred, but my local show their sponsor is, is five hundred. So tier two is three seventy five, okay. and then tier one was seven fifty, um, or tier two, three. God, I told you we need, a, <laughs> we need to switch the thing. Tier one sounds the highest, but it's the lowest. So tier okay. three was seven fifty, um, and yeah, we underpriced it for sure. Uh, we had. Listen to too many people who are like, I don't think you could ask more than 300 for the highest ones. We're like, well, we'll start out and ask double. And we actually, we didn't reach out any, to anyone for tier three. We actually, people found out we were doing the show and they were, JT from Reptichip was like, I don't know why you didn't call me in the first place. I'm mad at you. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> yeah. So, as far as like the structure of the show, is there like, anything else besides vendors is there talks kids section there is or or whatever all right talk about that because that's an important part of a show that people forget sometimes yes so educational show is one that we were like okay how do we make sure that this gets seen we don't want to take any of our vendors time and throw them in a conference room and no one walks in there and Mm -hmm. the great thing about this where we are located, it's not as big as I wanted it to be, especially with the number of vendors that we've now had fill out and want to come out. Um, but it's got these conference rooms right as you walk into the main atrium. So we'll have a lot of advertising, like, hey, there's there's educational shows, there's you know, there's a kids corner. So we will have like a kids corner. We realize like at these shows, a lot of the times parents come and the biggest thing like draws them away is like my kids don't have time to go do something um i don't know how traveling it's gonna be that's my my wife is more in charge of that kind of stuff um so she's gonna be the one that's like let's set it up and do this and have slides and i guess i'll just be building it Um, (laughs) is it like like a play place or is it like coloring books probably probably more coloring books there's might be like a little slide like okay. it's, it's going to be more fun for kids that are like three and under okay. rather than like, you're not going to set your 10 year old down there and be like, Hey, see you in an hour. <laughs> Go and, colors and caterpillars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, hopefully the educational shows do that for them. So we do, we're doing it on Sunday. Uh, we wanted to get, pretty much all the kinks worked out before we were like, let's go full bore, ask a ton of people to do this. Um, we had a couple people back out this week of, that we're going to do it. And I think they just realized like the timing of setting it up is a little bit harder than they anticipated. Um, so, but we have Sunday is going to be a pretty full schedule. We were hoping to have a terrarium class, but they just didn't, they, that wasn't going to work with them for <clears throat> employees and all that, which is hard because I'd have to do yeah. it thing and have, people spend money and do all that kind of stuff. So we, uh, we have, I think we have four presentations going on, um, on Sunday and we have, we have some cool ones. So we have wildfire retics, we have Weston who's going to do reticulated sort of talk and care and then bring out some of the big retics as more of a show and tell, uh, Chris from Epic style is going to do like a general 
a little bit of a general reptile care, like that kind of stuff. He does shows out in Kansas City, so he was pretty excited to do that. Uh, a lady named Lori Torini uh, is going to do carpet python behavior and enrichment uh, stuff. So she's done a ton of like studies and classes on that. We, we need to get the website updated with that educational show. We were trying to finalize all of our people and have links and all that. So we'll, uh, we'll see how, how they all do. Are you going to have a, a, like a projector so people can do PowerPoints or are they just going to be talking at a like There is a projector if people want them. Okay. Um, I haven't had anyone be like, I want a projector, but there's a projector. <laughs> there's uh, there's going to be, I think we're going to set up like 50 chairs in there. Um, if there's an influx and there's a ton of people in there, then I'll, I have the ability to throw in more. And I would love that. Like I, my hope is to have a ton of people in there learning stuff. Um, because I think that's something that gets missed at a lot of the shows nowadays. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not teaching the people that are just there for fun. So. Yeah. Shows have become a Jack of all trades, master of none swap meet thing <laughs> for, for me when I'm there, I'm like, I don't know what's going on anymore, but it's like the kids need to play. The, the people need to be educated on the species. You're trying to sell the species at the same time. They also want to touch everything, but you're like, that's not biosecure. Like there should be a separate touching section over there. You yes. know, go touch a kangaroo or something. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> so it's like, you're not really very good at doing anything. And so we're all just sitting there like, I don't know, with our thumbs up or but wondering why this isn't really working. So it sounded like, it sounds like you have a plan to try to make it work. So I'm excited about that. We do. Yeah, we do. And I, I hope we can pull it off effectively and, you know, everyone really enjoys it. That's, it's the, it's the taking off and getting it going with something that's new. And I think what we're trying to do different is make sure that as people walk in, they know about it. Like, I think a lot of times, like if there is an educational show, like people go on the announcer and like, Hey, in 10 minutes, there's a show. And people are like, Oh, I didn't even know. Yeah. Like, yeah. I want to have a schedule. So we'll have something at the front. Like you can scan a QR code as you walk in. It's like scan here for the map and the educational show schedule. So we're. Well. Yeah. I mean, I'm not t talking grief about it, but like the reptile nations were like that. And I don't, people were just like, what? Cause it sort of echoes through the, the room. Yeah, they were doing something, but but like nobody could really hear what the hell was going on yeah. anyway. So they would just stay wherever they were doing That's whatever they were doing in the main hall, especially because like mm -hmm. that that takes away a lot of space because our our space is already smaller than I want it to be and so that's where we'll have the educational show which has their own PA system which is going to be That's good. Oh, wait, wait is better. the main room carpeted or it's uh, not. No, okay. it was it makes it feel cozy. Cozy. <laughs> it does. So the only event center that really isn't the Colorado Convention Center or the Gaylord that is left that is big enough is this venue. So Reptilian Nation traditionally came out to Denver and had a 60,000 square foot area. He started mm -hmm. telling people he wasn't going to come back before this news I'll tell you about, but uh, he was telling people he's not coming back. So I was like, I'm going to, I'll call, I'll reach out to them and get the pricing. And we had the pricing from them and then they're like, Oh, you lost your dates. And I was like, what do you mean we lost our dates. Like you said yesterday we had our dates and they're like, Oh, the hotel sold. So they literally sold the convention center and hotel for, um, people to do a uh, homeless shelter forever. Yeah. Like in, per oh, yep. So okay. we lost the 60,000 square foot venue. That's great. And yeah, it's now gone. So, we we would love to reach out to the Gaylord. I saw a comment saying, like, what's wrong with the Gaylord? There's nothing wrong with the Gaylord. Uh, there's something wrong with all of us reptile people, and that's what scares <laughs> the Gaylord. <laughs> so. Are they worried about, like, animals getting loose or do red runners getting loose or whatever? Yep. So that's actually one of our biggest concerns down here at the convention center uh, or the Douglas County Fairgrounds is – they do like food shows and that kind of stuff. And they're like, we're really concerned about escapees. So we're actually going to try to do some stuff to make sure that people feel like taken care of in that. Like if someone has deli cups all over the tail, like, Hey, I'm going to bring you this tote. Please keep your stuff in there overnight. Like if something does get out, I'm not going to come yell at you. Please come 
tell me like, Hey, this got out. We got to find it. Right. The faster you find it, the less far it's gone. Probably. Yeah, exactly. And there's not a whole lot of places for it to hide, but the bleachers that are up against the wall could, could hide animals. So if something gets out, come tell me, I'm not going to be like, get out of my show right now. Like I'm going to be like, no, let's find it. Like these are animals. They get out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's tough. I've always wondered if like we should be instituting like secondary containment methods, like, like the delis in a bin, at least for overnight in case a deli is poorly snapped, but also like, should we be enforcing like tape on delis? Yeah. Cause you know, nobody's busting out of an acrylic display no. really. No. But the delis are like the weak point because people maybe don't snap them down as good as they thought they had. Like, yeah. should we be doing, you know, like the venomous shows will do red tape to like double guarantee. <laughs> should we be doing that just so the hotel feels better? You know, I think that's something that in that we could definitely put in one of our rules is like, hey, let's make sure that these are taped. I mean, I know it sucks. Like if someone's like, hey, I really want to see this animal and you have to untape and then retape if they walk away and they don't take the mm -hmm. animal. Um, I don't know. I don't need to fuck them, frankly, because <laughs> a lot of them like I don't. You know what I mean? Like you can tell everything about it by looking at it, and it's a biosecurity risk to be manhandling twenty animals. So if there's like a weird tape rule, and I'm like, oh no, the tape rule. Yeah. Yeah, I'm taping. yeah I'm tape it. Whoopsie. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. I'll be the bad guy. I'm I'm the bad guy at my table. Is I give you have kids. 50 times a day be like, Hey, can I hold that? I'm like, sorry, bud. I don't want to stress them out. And I don't know what's floating around the show. Right. Yeah. It, I have a big sign now and it's just like, Hey, you know, like it's printed. It's nice. It's like, I try to limit it because it's literally dangerous. They don't know that it's dangerous. So, I mean, if there's more like built in excuses not to manhandle every animal possible, uh, <laughs> yeah. the hope is that they would learn that this isn't a touchy show. That's my dream. That's the, that's definitely the hope. And I, I, I think the hard part is like, you're getting in people that are new because you do want, Yeah, they don't know. They don't know. Yeah, no right. one. I mean, half the time someone walks up and like, are all these real? <laughs> yeah. Nope. These are all fake. <laughs> so. All right. Lisa said she doesn't like, and this is what was wrong with the reptile nation ones is there was, they would like holler that there's an education show and you would have to go to a stage in the middle. And then it was a carnival Barker vibe. Yeah. But, but I'm saying if you have literally a conference room with a hypothetical PowerPoint about something, some as basic as just general care or like some sort of husbandry thing. Yeah. It's not as cringe to me. It's more normal. Yeah. And that's, that's what we're trying to make it like the difference is like, Hey, you're coming to sit down. Maybe you have no idea about carpet pythons. So Lori's going to tell you a little bit more of like, Hey, they're different than ball pythons. They can't be mm -hmm. thrown into a tub and you hope that they do really well. Like they're smarter than ball pythons. So like they need enrichment, they need that kind of stuff. So that's where we're going to have that. And then like, obviously Weston with his retics, like that's not, I don't know if, I don't know if he lets people like come up and touch them. I, I actually have no idea. Um, but I, him showing like, Hey, don't go buy a retic today because you think it's cool. Like here's an adult retic and this is what it'll get to. So that's where we're, trying <laughs> to go. Good. we don't want to be a carnival. Like people, Hey, come touch, come touch all this stuff. Like $5. Hey, take a picture of this retic, yeah. $5. Yeah. Yeah. We want it to be like, Hey, come, come hang out come learn something new. And I, I think we actually have a plant general house plant care talk. Going okay, on. good. That's good. All right. Let's yeah. talk about plants. Yeah. Did, was there a percentage of plant vendors you wanted or, or something? Because like it is billed as a half and half show. Yeah. So I guess it's hard to bill it as anything different, right? If we call it a 75% reptile, 50% <laughs> like it's not right. a really, very, catchy name and it doesn't really attract those people and plants are hard um but people are plant people are funny like they're very okay. scared of competition tell me more about plant they're very, people. they're very scared of competition so like we had we had a store we like a pet a plant store we were talking to we we're like hey do you want to come in and they're like well how many other plant vendors do you have and i'm like well that's sort of the point of a show is to have a few and i gave him a few names he's like i don't know it just seems like too competition 
And I was like, yeah, that, okay. that's, what, that's what existence is. Like all of us are competing against each other for everything. Um, so they were a little weird about it. So we were focusing a lot on like people that do like sort of niche specific plants and focusing on trying to get them in. So we have Tagawa Gardens, which is a huge nursery here in Colorado. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to be one of our vendors. I literally gave them the list of plants to bring. Like I was like, hey, here's what you should bring to the show. I don't want you stepping on other people because you're so like such a big nursery. So they, they took it with, with what I told them they brought it. And then I have like more specialty people like an orchid person, Kujala orchids is their name. They just do orchid mm -hmm. carnivorous plants. And then I have some people that do like super rare variegated stuff. Some people that do like begonias. So we, we really wanted, I think we wanted like 10 plant specific people. And I think we have six plant specific and we have probably five to six people that do a split of reptiles and plants. So we've got, well, did you, did you want, did you think about putting them in their own section? So the people who are scared of I thought spiders about and snakes. I thought about go it. over there. Okay. Uh, we thought about it a lot. Um, we really want to cross that barrier though. We don't want people coming to the show, being terrified of the snakes, being that and not learning and trying to get out of that. Like my big mm -hmm. goal here with having a plant reptile cross is like these two hobbies are very similar. They, like people love to collect different species of plant. People love to collect different, obviously ball python being just colors and all that, but different reptiles. Like I wanted that to be a crossing point where like a plant person can come in and be like, I really wanted plants, but I'm scared of these. And then they like can see like, oh wait, these little, little crested geckos aren't scary. These little ball pythons aren't scary. And that can help cross them over into the okay. hobby of reptile because the bigger we are as like a reptile industry, the harder it is for us to fall. And if the people that are terrified of the reptiles are no longer necessarily terrified of them. And I, I mean, we're going to have people that just won't show up because there's reptiles. Like we get comments every day on our social media posts for the, the show being like, Nope, like absolutely not. Not going to do that. And like, I'll just give it a shot. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know the right, like it would be cool if they were cross pollinated, but like, like, I don't know. Uh, Daytona has a lot of obviously um, plant vendors because they're in Florida. Right. So yeah. there's lots of greenhouses for tropical plants. I think they're all mixed up there too. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't know which one would be better. It, like in the end. Uh, but cause, cause like Rami's doing the like fish building, the reptile yeah. building. What, so, so maybe it's okay. And then people can pay for the part that they want to go to, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's see how it shakes out. If we had that opportunity, we definitely could do something like that. I don't know. I, it's that whole idea of a different room. I get right. so many mixed feelings from people like that's, that's a terrible idea. And I, I sort of agree. NARBC did it in 2019. And I like remember going into each room because I like, I knew people in each of those rooms. I was like, I'm going to go and teach these rooms. And everyone was so mad. Like I, mm -hmm. I don't want to like set up a show. And then like someone comes into the main hall where we have most of our reptile vendors at this point, it would be 90 people can fit inside of ours. Um, and if they, all those plants were like in a different area, people would not be happy because like mm -hmm. they'd walk into the reptile show and be like, where are the plants? And then they'd have to like, <laughs> It's hard. It's hard to keep these people happy. Oh. I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, it, it could it could work though if if it's clear what's going on, I guess yeah. is. And sometimes it's, it's like dependent on the venue that like, it, it's really obvious there's two choices and they're equally good and you should go to both right like, one of our oh. big issues is like people don't really pay attention you know i no. i get comments constantly on a post that like for the show that says like the dates and where it is on the post where and when is this <laughs> Well, repeat where and when it is and what it is. Uh, well, uh, it's the All-American Plant Show. We are in Castle Rock, Colorado. So 
It's a little south of Denver. We're advertising as Denver, which again, people that don't pay attention to things, they we get some fun comments. Um, yeah, a lot of people are mad that it's too far away. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't. Okay. I so we get them from the south. We get them from the north. Like, why isn't this in? Fort Collins or why isn't this in Grand Junction or why isn't this in Colorado Springs? It's like, because it's always going to be somewhere Not that the right is wanting it. like I, and I, I, I responded to someone today. It was like, well, a lot of what goes into it is venues, dates available, like pricing for the venue, where the venue is located. Like, I'm not somebody that wants to have like a middle of nowhere venue with no parking. And like, mm -hmm. we want it to be able to have food trucks be on our, our site so that people can eat while they're at our, our show instead of being like, Oh, there's nothing here. All right. I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. um, and like a lot of the shows here, there's nothing to eat for 15, 20 minutes from that location. And if there is, right. if it's at like a fairground or something. So yeah, we're, we're in Castle Rock. Uh, we have downtown Castle Rock is right around the corner. There's tons of, tons of restaurants down there and then we have uh, food trucks outside we have i think we have parking for five thousand people it's is parking uh, free parking awesome. is free okay free yeah a lot of those like really cool downtown venues yeah. they have free parking so that like can can be a stumbling block for people sometimes because they're not yeah. used to it for a reptile we, show we have a local place called the uh, national western complex and people are like, why aren't you doing it there? And I'm like, there's no parking. Like we understand that if there's a family of four and they're going to come spend the money on the tickets and then spend the money on food and spend the money on parking, like it's going to deter them from not wanting to do it. No one wants to spend $500 on an outing for an afternoon to go to a reptile show. Like, right. And it, not buy it, animals. <laughs> it's very weird because people are used to like, Oh, I would, I did this convention center for something else. Like I don't I don't know, like uh, a Comic Con or something. But you're there for the experience of the panels or whatever. And yes. so like you'll spin to to get a signature from yeah whoever. And, but and you might buy a little bit of art, but you're not really there to buy the art. So like they'll pay for the parking. But when you're there to hypothetically be spending money on a bunch of plants or animals or whatever, they start to like change what kind of consumer they are in my opinion too that's why the fort worth reptile nation was no bueno by the way <laughs> i was like what are we doing here yeah that's where we want to like try to be different like we don't want to think just about like how many vendors can i fit in here because like to be clear vendor money does not go in my pocket like there is not a dime mm -hmm. of vendor money that is even going near my pocket we're going past our budget actually unfortunately because we we're doing radio ads we're doing billboards we're doing all the social media marketing so like we we want to make sure people get through the door because we want vendors to have a good show like that's mm -hmm. the most important thing if you don't have a good show you're not going to bend with us and then right we just we we want that are you doing marketing so i've been served your ads and i'm not near you so are you doing it nationally or are you doing it some more money, more dollars spent per day locally, like within 50 miles or how are you splitting that? Or you, is this a trade ads. secret? I don't know. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have different ads. So some of them I have going into surrounding States. Um, so our goal, like, again, is let's be a show that is fun. That does, you do want to come to, you do want to just come travel to. So we're never going to be Tinley. That's, Timley's Timley, like mm -hmm. that have any goals or aspirations to even compete with Potter. We're friends with Potter. We don't want to do that, but we want to have a show that is like, Hey, I want to fly out to the super show. That sounds really fun. We want to fly out to NARBC. That sounds really fun. Like Denver is a pretty good look centralized hub for that kind of mm -hmm. show. And it's never been that because it's like, and we're, we, we don't want to do this hashtag, but we've considered it because we think it's funny. Like it's like not your mama's uh, flea market. Um, <laughs> we don't want to step on toes of anybody like, you know, but I mean, there's a time and a place for like the flea market ones too. In yeah. some ways, I think, you know, like people cut yeah. their teeth on it, whatever. I don't know. Keep, keep people with feeders in small towns, but yeah, there are some shows that are 
that are like that. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I'm, I've been advertising to like surrounding states that touch Colorado. So. Okay. Yeah. How did you rope in uh, Mr. Cresco into being your like uh, fan of white for the show? I mean, it's, or did he, did he come willingly or, or without being roped in? Uh, he, he's roped in. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, so we're, I'm, I'm really good friends with Robin. Uh, Troy and I are both good friends with Robin Redline. So it just made it easy. Like, you know, we know Cusco, all that kind of stuff. I, I, I blackmailed him a little. I was like, Hey, you have a video of my six week old daughter on one of your videos. Like you got to come to our show now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause I think, so there's a lot of like, uh, intentionally or not like top down influence on how well a show does for like me you know reptile famous people enough yeah. of those go then yeah. it's like oh it's an event it's special like, even if the door is the same as like a some other show yeah it just doesn't feel like an event and it doesn't feel special even though the doors are the same does that make any sense at all yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's good that you're it does trying to like call in some favors bring in your friends make well, it fun. That, was, that was the goal so um yeah we'll have we'll have Costco out there we have uh, Leviathan Snakes is going to come out mm -hmm. uh, doing a documentary on shows and stuff like that. So they they wanted to come out and actually document they coming together, um, especially because they're gonna, they want to follow Troy around a little bit since Troy does so many shows. He's coming to Dallas, like mm -hmm. I think he's starting to drive today. So um, yeah, he he does a lot more shows than me. I'm I don't have time for that anymore. But uh, he. Uh, so they're going to come out and do that. Who else do we have? I think uh, Robin's flying out Adam from Proper Royals. Um, so he. Yeah, he, I heard about that. We were, we were planning our uh, our dinner. We're going to do a, a dinner on Saturday night. We're trying to get. It's hard because you go to a restaurant and they want one person to pay for everything. So, like, mm -hmm. I can't have 90 vendors at a, a dinner and then I have to pay for it. Um, right now. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish that uh, I wish that promoting shows made that much money that I was just like, woohoo, we'll <laughs> spend it all. But uh, no, not quite, not quite like that. So, uh, but at, Robin was like, yeah, is Adam able to come? And I was like, oh, he's coming out. And he's like, yeah, he's going to be at my table and he's going to hang out. So he'll be That's out good. there. Uh, Troy convinced John Dag to come hang out at the show and walk around. So he'll be walking around, hanging out. So um, That's all right, yeah. good. Yeah. Can can Denver? I don't know how to put this politely, but is the city rich enough to support like a bougie show? You know what I mean? Like some cities, I'm like, there's three million people here. Surely they can have a good reptile show, and it just feels like the whole whoever has money is doing something else with it or whatever. So, so like, is the culture there to like be into it, and then and then the the standard of living high enough. Yes. So okay. it's not rude. Um, Colorado blew up when we became legal. Like in 2012, mm -hmm. it was like an influx of so many. I, so I think we have 5.3 million people or something as of the 2023 consensus. Um, and for example, as Wyoming has 537,000. <laughs> um, where we are in Castle Rock, the median in income is like, I think I want to say it's like 650,000 a year. Oh, that's good. I'm into that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, like if your subdivision is high income, I mean, like it's really weird to talk about it like this and people are like, you're mean. No, yeah. no. That's how, I don't know, capitalism works. You have to like go to where people who can buy your product are interested yeah. in buying it. <laughs> I don't know how to put it any differently well, than that. Sort of the, the, the question of when people are like, why isn't it here? Why isn't it there? And it, like, we actually had one that was like, why isn't it in Rifle, Colorado? And I was like, I don't think there's a venue in Rifle, Colorado. <laughs> like there's probably, I don't even know the population is there. It's probably 30,000. Like are yeah, we you gonna... could rent a church basement. Yeah, I can rent a you church, basement, but then like, what am I? What am I doing it for? Like, <laughs> right. Like, I'm not going to get the people that are coming out to the show to come out to the to bend that show. Like, hey, you want to drive to the middle of nowhere mountains of Colorado and try to sell to the five 
people that are going to show up. Like, yeah, it's, it, 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 it stinks. Like it's, I wish that I could just keep everyone happy. I really do, but I, I can't, I, there will be someone always unhappy no matter what. There's going to be someone that lives in Castle Rock. That's going to be like, ah, I was, it sucked. <laughs> like, yeah, I think like, it sounds to me like you're trying to thread the needle in a way that makes sense to you based on your experience and your friend's experience, having vended lots of shows. And I think just that earnestness, it's going to be great because of that. Like you're just trying. To, yeah. So if anybody's a naysayer, cause a lot of times that's all it really takes is just try a little bit harder. Cause the threshold right now is pretty low. Yeah. And so just a little bit, is pretty good. And you're like, yeah. wow. And I, I think Colorado has been like sort of chomping at the bit for a show like that. So reptilian nation was our best show that came to Denver. Mm -hmm. Ryan numbers vary. Ryan doesn't necessarily share, which is fine. Like I, I understand there's a business model where people share and there's a business model where people don't. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, from numbers that everyone was like, oh, it's anywhere from 8,000 to 14,000 people through the door. Like, and I'm like, that's a big difference. That's, that's the difference of two shows combined almost essentially. And mm -hmm. so that was like, I think people were chomping at the bit for a really good show like that. Um, and where it was in Denver was a better location. It was a harder location. The parking was terrible and the venue didn't really deal with people well. And how I have food trucks, like I couldn't, have, I could have put them there. They would have been a, two blocks away. Like, mm -hmm. so it, it, there's things that don't work with that. Um, I'm losing track of what I was saying. So they, I think people really wanted a big show to show up. And when Ryan was telling people like, Hey, I'm not coming back. I was like, I want, like, I think we can do this. Like Troy, Troy and I had talked when we were, he was driving up to Pomona and he was like, Hey, is Ryan coming back? I was like, no. And I'm actually considering doing something. He's like, well, like, tell me, like, I want to be part of it. So we jumped in it and started doing it. And I mean, with the number of vendors that we had sign up, like pretty much immediately as we launched, like, it seems like everyone was like, we need this. We need somebody that cares about the local area, cares about the diversity of what's in the show, cares about mm -hmm. not having renewal by Anderson windows, like sitting inside mm -hmm. the show, cares about not having 15 like 3D printer tables. Like we need somebody that cares about what's gonna happen. And I, I hope that we are that. <laughs> Speaking of 3D printer tables, did are there any 3D printer tables? Are a lot people allowed yeah. to bring? Because I don't know. What you have one? We have one. Well, okay. we have people that do it. Like we have people that breed crested geckos and they have 3D printed stuff. And I'm I'm trying not to be a strictler and be, stickler and be like, hey, you can't you can't have that. Like you can't sell that. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's so like the the economics of what's happening at some of the smaller shows. I don't even blame anybody anymore because like th those people need to make money. They're trying to sell their crest geckos and they make, they can sell two crest geckos a show in that market period. That does not cover their table or hotel. So they have to do something else. They do 3d printing. It's fine. As long as they still have crest geckos. I'm like, yeah, good. Who cares? I, I, I literally don't care. It keeps the kids happy. You're happy. Everybody's happy. So, like, I don't care about it. It is hard, though, when there's multiple 3D only printers at the same yeah. show and they don't sell animals or supplies. Yeah. And I'm like, I think we wanted to make sure, like, you you make things that are reptile related. Like, please don't be selling 3D printed, like, I don't know what I could say that people 3D print that's not related to anime figures or something like that i don't know like only have dragon ball z on your table and it's like well it's a reptile what if it's got a dragon on it <laughs> i mean i mean i think I, I don't know where it is I, I think i've got two 3d printed things inside this snake room <laughs> right but, yeah I, it, it, it's a tough because a lot of people are really mad at alternative item vendors and maybe i was too at one point and then i'm like Fuck it. I like th this is the e economics of what's happening in this room. Yeah. If they could sell out of Crested Geckos every show, they would just bring Crested Geckos because that's obviously what they like better. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's fine as long as it doesn't like change the purpose of the show. Yeah. I, we, we don't want to be a craft show. We don't want to be a, 
a toy show. So like we, we, we have those vendors, like we have some people that do like um, entomology and all that kind of stuff. Like we have people that do something slightly different because we have to bring in the diversity of stuff. Like we have a, we have a beta fish vendor, like, good. like we need to have a little bit of that diversity of product. You can't expect someone to not sell anything else. Like ball pythons, you know, you talk to people all the time. They're like, eh, I didn't sell a thing. It's like, might need to sell something else. Like, yeah. Yeah. Even if it's not a different species or a toy, like the accessories for ball pythons, like just because that's how you make the, this market work for you at that moment. Yep. What person? Okay, we're doing it. What percentage <laughs> of ball python breeders did you end up with, or tables total? Hold on. Whichever way you want to think about I it. Should, I should have this in the back of my head because it's a question I get asked all the time. I think I think we may only have like ten booths, ten fifteen booths that are that are exclusively ball python. Well, and even most, mostly them. Like you got Trevor from Ball Labs. He's got he's a lot of things. He's got all that stuff. So he's got that. Um, a lot of these guys don't specifically just do that. So like Tim Simmons, you know, he's got ball pythons as like what you'd think is his majority. But I mean, most of his shows are done. He does well with like cork bark and supplies and all that. Mm -hmm. I think I think we kept it. I think we kept it well under 20% though. Um, okay. That's cool. That's it's cool. hard. Was it hard? Like for yeah. your buddies? Like, fuck oh. you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, the, we have a wait list that's already like 20 people long. For and, ball python specifically. Oh, for, for everything. Okay. Ball and, and everything now. Like we okay. have, we don't, we don't have a table left. Oh, well, I take that back. We have a table left. But because we haven't set up tables in this venue before, we didn't want to be like, oh shit, this doesn't fit. <laughs> like, so we kept it to make sure that we can maneuver things around and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think, I don't think we have any one species over 20% of vendors. Um, okay, that's good. So we have, a, we, we have Crested Gecko people obviously, but I mean, a lot of those Cresty folks now do like Chihuahuas and do Lichiana. Uh, be honest and do line geckos and do um sarin sonums and stuff like that so i like pangea like they've got a pretty mm -hmm. extensive list of geckos mm -hmm. bringing. and then they're bringing in eight crates of supplies but right you know yeah pangea is a solid pickup yeah did you try to like i don't know court josh's frogs or bio dude for I a supply vendor type person i did did not yet i okay. certainly could with josh like i i don't know josh well personally but like we've known each other i we vended my table at timley used to be across from josh's back in 2008 2009 so like i've known him a long time so i i'm sure and I know he wants to come to Colorado. Like that's one of his big things. He's like, Hey, I, I really wanted to. And reptilian nation and him just never had a good relationship for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would bring him out. The problem is the venue size for sure. Um, and the goal hopefully is like, we have a really good show in this location. We have good numbers come through. I mean, the vendor, the people coming out from the vendors already is, is a huge one to show to any venue coming forward. Like the Gaylord would be one that we would go to. I don't, I don't even think we could even consider the Colorado Convention Center because reptile folk aren't ready for a thousand dollar eight foot table. Like, couldn't. Afford I wonder that. if we should be. Is that weird? Sometimes I'm like, are we not doing reptile shows right? Like, I mean, I would say like Tinley's price is the max. No, I wouldn't know if it, I don't know if it is the max because if okay. you look at the number of people that come through there, the number of vendors that are like, I'm on a wait list. I'm on a wait list for three years. Like, they're chomping at the bit to even have one table, and that's what four eighty five for a table. Right. I guess the question is if 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 Tenley made it more expensive, 
then the only people who could, I mean, with this one, afford largely will start to become ball python breeders or whatever, or high end morph breeders of whatever species. And yeah. so you'll have a self selection away from diversity. And maybe that's why, even though there's a lot of demand for it, they keep the price where it is. I think our, ind our industry does a bad job of knowing that a show is a huge marketing opportunity. Like, mm -hmm. They sit down at the shows, they sit on their chair like this and look at their phone and wait for someone to ask them something about their snakes. I mean, I, not everyone, don't, not everyone needs to be offended by me saying this, but there are certain people that will sit at their show and not move. And I, I fly out to Tinley every year just for marketing. Like mm -hmm. I spend the money just to walk around Tinley and be like, Hey, like let's talk to people that I know and keep those relationships going. And, even if it's not a marketing of like someone calls you and like wants to buy something from you, like you build relationships with people that make your costs go down. Like I have a relationship with JT, mm -hmm. like rep to chip. I can get rep to chip easier and all that kind of stuff through him. So it's, it, it makes it, it's a better marketing opportunity. I think that if you've ever been to a reef show, like mm -hmm. we just had one out here locally, Troy came out, you know, we walked it, walked our venue and all that kind of stuff their their booths are a thousand dollars and mm -hmm. essentially a reef show is a ball python show like they all have the same thing they're not bringing in a new coral that is like never been seen in the industry before like there might be one dude so we were talking to a guy that was like it's literally like a ball python show like there's one dude he may have like a really cool coral and be exciting and he's going to be like the canova like he's going to pop out a new coral and everyone's going to run to him and want to see it. Everyone else has the same thing. Like everything else is the same and they're charging a thousand dollars a booth. But they also get more time because they have a longer setup. So should oh. reptile shows be longer in time? Well, so this reef show wasn't longer. This one is okay. literally just the same weekend. Yeah. And it's tiny. Like they took the entire 60,000 square foot, the building that's getting turned into a homeless shelter. And I think they probably had, 30 vendors in there oh and they just had big frag tanks everywhere yeah. okay that's yeah. cool that's that's like a site though i feel like i would want to see it oh i mean that's so with where our venue is now like we got we got lucky like our dates are even the show pro, like coordinator was like i don't know how you got these dates like mm -hmm. this was luck these people keep these dates for five years plus they don't give them up and we have two dates with the same venue already. So I'm like, so do you think if this one, if the spring one is hot popping, yeah, you will do the fall one and switch venues for the next spring, hypothetically in a best case scenario, or, or where's your heart at right now on that one? Best, best case scenario. Yeah. Uh, if okay. we could come to the Gaylord and say, Hey, Douglas County, let us do this. Like Douglas County fairgrounds is the name of our, our venue. Douglas County's, for lack of a better term, a traditionally a conservative county that's like terrified of reptiles, terrified of weed, terrified of anything that's just right. a little bit too taboo. Mm -hmm. um, if we can go to them and be like, hey, they let us do this and they would continue to let us do it, but we can't have the number of people coming through the door that we are. Like we need, we need to move into the Gaylord and that would make it easier, I think, for us to sell it to them. Um, and I, I, I tend to think that I'm an okay person to talk to. Like, I feel like I don't scream, like I have 400 snakes inside of a warehouse. Like I just look like a, a human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, not that no one, that people look like not normal people in the reptile industry, right. but, um, because everyone, we're all fucking weird. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, doesn't take less than three mental illnesses to, to get to this point. <laughs> and every human is weird. Like even the people that yeah. look normal look presentable. Like they're, they're fucking weird. Like yeah. there's something that they're weird. And so. You ever met horse people? Oh. <laughs> they're way weirder than us. I've never seen such a thing. Yeah. Or they, cat people. Uh, like. The <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, like the hard part for me right now is it's the same time as Dallas fall. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, so it's, you're, you're sort of going head to head right now in terms so of we, like, we talked about it. Uh, we, 
we got our dates. I didn't ask for these dates. I was like, I literally, I want any other dates except these dates, please. And mm -hmm. she was like, I, that's what I have. She does. She did tell me that there is somebody that is potentially canceling for a different date. Oh, that would be cool. Well, I mean, like, like public it be closer there. to like the the. It can't be closer to like Christmas or whatever. Like moving well, towards Christmas. They gave us a December twentieth date. That oh we, damn! Said, nope, <laughs> it's not that good. <laughs> no. Um, Labor Day is the other one that there's a potential for. Okay. Uh, I hope. I hope that they would cancel. That's why we haven't announced anything. That's why our website doesn't say September, like show us here. We've even put off waiting to do banners for April. Like mm -hmm. that's the dates because like, what if she just comes forward and like, Oh, actually we have these dates. Um, but Potter what, was, what like, would you know by, or what's your, like, we got to go with September. What's, what's the, the, the time of the year where you have, you're forced into it. I think so. Like, for us, with them, I think it's 60 days before that we have to pay the whole thing. Okay. Um, that would be a way too close for people planning. Like, hey, we are switching our days, like, for the show. Come yeah, on. it's hard for a lot of people, because, like, I don't know, we all have to book our dumb shows a lot of times in advance, and if you pay for the year for some of these shows, you get, like, a discount, so you sort of do, and then you're like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but guy, what's that credit card bill like paying a uh, for a whole convention center? Is that <laughs> crazy. <laughs> it's uh, like I said, we're not we we don't pocket any uh, money from vendors. Like I think that's a like a traditional like talk to show. Like, well, you got the vendor money, so who cares? Like, you can walk away scot free. Who cares who comes through the door? It's like not, not if you do it the the way that you want people to get through the door. Like, mm -hmm. like if if I didn't spend any money on advertising and I didn't spend any money on making the show look nice when you walk into it, then yeah, yeah, we could pocket a good amount of money. And if I didn't pay for right. you, right. <laughs> are they doing, are you doing, are you, have you decided to do pipe and drape or not? I don't think you did. Right. Troy is, Troy is more on wanting to do that. So when Lauren and I went in there the first time, uh, it was the Tanner gun show. And, mm -hmm. They had three feet of aisle space and the tables don't have two tables as an end cap. They had one. And then the tables were behind the eight foot tables. So there's about, what would that math equate to? 60 inch five. So there's three foot between the tables too. Mm -hmm. So they have these rows of tons of gun shows. In, and we were like, Oh shit, did we just book the wrong place? This feels tiny. Like this is awful. So we, Originally, didn't want to do pipe and drape because we thought maybe it'll make it feel small. We went in there on Monday morning, Troy and I, um, pretty much empty. There was like, there was like a consignment show going on, like selling uh, clothes to mm -hmm. all the rock moms, and there was more space. So he's like, I feel like I really want the pipe and drape now in certain areas. Um, I don't think it'd be like a Tinley setup where we have the back and then lower. Uh, pipe and drape between the booths mm -hmm. uh, we may have like pipe and drape going between the islands um, to make it feel a little bit more of like a a nice show okay yeah <laughs> I, I know it, it adds cost it does make sometimes i'm like does it matter but it's more like the noise dampening that's yeah. the most important part <laughs> yeah because that's big it can be so cacophonous if it's a big venue and there's nothing soft to to count, well, catch yeah. the Sound We're now with like people don't think about this kind of stuff either. Like we have to deal with fire fire marshals, and we have to deal with like things that are new rules that just change that even the venue doesn't even know about. Like we have to, I think we have to put in nine fire extinguishers, <laughs> like for the venue or just for you. For me, okay, all right. I have to go buy nine fire extinguishers, and like that be. A, okay if they didn't expire and if you never like i hope i never have to use it so like right. i don't know how fast they expire i need to like look at an actual expiration date on the a, a fire so i think it's like seven years so i guess like it, yeah do they have to be a certain kind i bet a lot of people have fire extinguishers and all the like nine vendors could bring a fire extinguisher and just be like, yeah, we got we one. Them, like within 75 feet 
of, of a exit. Yeah. yeah. So uh, okay. also now, so we have PACFA out here, uh, Pet Animal Care Facilitation Act, if you're a vendor mm -hmm. with us. I have the overarching PACFA license. You don't have to worry about a PACFA license if you're not from Colorado. But uh, they already have a salmonella waiver uh, that I have to have everyone sign when they walk in. If they're going to hold an animal or plan to touch an animal or anything like that, they have to read this thing and say, hey, I know about salmonella. They want me to put in hand sanitizer stations throughout the show as well, which I'm okay with because I have hand sanitizer on my table all the time and mm -hmm. like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to like strap a fire extinguisher to these things and hope a child doesn't pull a pin. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. So. I, so, so the amount of fire extinguishers in the existing building or, you know, is not enough, I guess yeah. is what's weird to me. So we have four. They're like on the outer walls because like there's the bleachers come out traditionally and they like do like radio arenas and stuff like a rodeo arenas, radio arenas, rodeo arenas, mm -hmm. like where people can all watch. And they have them on the ends where I have to be careful with our tables not being four feet within those. Um, and then they have fire hose hookups. But mm -hmm. just that's not enough. That's not enough. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think back 10 years ago, like before our population shot up, like Castle Rock probably didn't really care. They're like, do whatever you want. And now we have a fire marshal that came from Vegas like last year in Castle Rock. Oh, and he's all used to like Vegas code. Shame. And he's like, we should just update all this to whatever. Yep. All Maybe. right, cool. We love that. I mean, I, I literally have to, I have to hire security guards. Like we don't, really get a choice in the matter. We have to for crowd management of over 500 people at a time. Are you just hiring, I don't know, buds? I don't even know. No, they have to be licensed. Like, they have, they to, have be to be licensed mm -hmm. security. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So don't try to this steal any. It's hard. <laughs> Making a show is hard. Fuck it. <laughs> well, I, I can't tell you how many people have been like, have reached out and been like, oh, I considered doing this. And I'm like, I knew before we started, ready. it was a lot of work. Um, Tony, I didn't even know a little bit of what I did. And I thought it was, I thought it was more than what most people think it is. Right. Most Do you people, think, I don't know if you, if you want to like the institutional knowledge, now that you already have it, you would want to do more than two a year, like at a different location, different state. Yeah. Uh, so, so, <laughs> We wouldn't want to do a lot. Like we don't want to be, we don't want to have a ton of shows. Like I clearly work pretty full time with everything else that I do. Um, which I can tell you right now, if I didn't have to, I wouldn't be climbing on windows and ladders and putting in windows and selling windows. But um, it, it gives me a good living. So I do it. But I think right now we do have plans to move into different States uh, we might max out. I, I would say we probably max out at 10 shows a year. That's like, a lot. It's a lot, but yeah. there's some that do 200. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. That, so like for me in my heart, the more I've, I've like bitched about shows for three years or something. Cause like, you know, there's the master of there's like jack of all trades problem, the trade, the, the like swap meet problem, the like people pretend like one table's earning $1,700. Cause that's how much money came to the door. I'm like, that's not how much most tables are earning. So you're just full yeah. of shit. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many people came to the door. That's not how much money came to the door. There's that problem. And so the more I'm like, we need big, nice regional shows less often. That's my, my dream. So like, this is part of the dream coming true so i i you just have to like get more people there more excited bigger door nicer stuff good variety make everyone happy <laughs> all at once somehow and then shows will be better that's my dream that's my feeling so like, you're doing it good job we've, we've had a few people like reach out like good buddies and that kind of stuff like not just like a comment on facebook like i, I, I don't like when people like go off of uh a comment on Facebook and be like, well, we've had people ask about this. Like, that's silly. Like you had one comment. Don't, don't over mm -hmm. 
hate it. We've had buddies be like, hey, our area, it has shows. They have shows. And they, we need those shows. Like, trust me. Like, we need the Repticons. We need the Show Me. We, like, those shows need to exist inside of the Reptile world to bring new breeders into a, a, a lower end area. Like you can't expect mm-hmm. every new breeder to be like, Oh, I, I've just started. I'm going to go spend $600 on an end cap. Right. right. $2,000 on my display to make it look nice. Like we, we need the smaller shows for that purpose. And like, they will always have people come through the door, but we, we've had people reach out and be like, Hey, our area doesn't have, and in most areas don't, right? Like most areas don't have a super show. They don't have a NARBC. Like mm-hmm. most regions don't. And we can say Daytona, but Daytona is no longer what it was. And mm-hmm. that's fine. Like it, the eighties is long gone. Um, so we, that's our, our hope. And it's with bringing the plant portion in like flora fauna uh, conference up in New York they're doing something like completely even different than what we're trying to consider. Like theirs is like a retreat experience. If you I before. know, I actually love flora fauna as a concept. Like I would love a ball python flora, flora fauna, like just ball python high end. You get one six foot table and it's the best of the best. And it's really truly about networking and doing a retreat. And maybe you sell some stuff, whatever. I think that'd so, be really fun. So back to the venue, like dates we have. Like, I, I never want to give them up because I'm like, it's hard to get them. Mm-hmm. If I moved into a bigger area, like, that's that's a thought process. Like, a, a ball python conference, like, mm-hmm. that would be a central location. Castle Rock's a really nice place for that kind of stuff. Like, if we could bring in people to be like, hey, bring your best. That's all you get to bring. You don't. Right. We're not trying to have you make make have you make twenty thousand off of twenty dollar snakes. Like right. we invest and we're gonna have talks and whatever you can talk about with ball pythons further than what people can find on YouTube, right? But like do what they Yeah, I mean that would show that the ball python industry is acting much mature. Yeah. Or you know well, what I mean? Well, like look at koi shows. Like Yeah. I feel like all of us should model everything off of koi people. Because oh. they've been keeping those fuckers for Three five hundred years, and they're like still high end ones, cheap mm-hmm. ones, in the middle ones. Well, like, that goes to the, whatever, and it's the, the, the breeding hobby right? still exists. Like the market's crashing, like blah blah blah. It's like people have been breeding koi for hundreds of years. People have been breeding horses for thousands of years. Like the market only drops if you drop it and if you jump out. Like. I've been doing this 20 years, 20. Mm-hmm. This is my 20th year breeding ball pythons, 22nd year breeding anything. I've seen all of the collapsing economy market's going to crash. The industry's done for. I've, I've been through many of them. Mm-hmm. It, it always slows down. It, it has to, like you can't just put funnel money into something so much. I mean, a general economy, has to go through a recession. Like mm-hmm. we can't just pump money and pump money and pump money and pump money and everyone gets rich. Everyone gets rich. Everyone gets rich. Like, yeah, that's not. Yeah, works. people don't. I don't know why. It's really weird because people are like, you know, I don't. I don't know. People have problems with like fiat currency in general and understanding it. But like, we just did the most QE ever. Yeah. So like everyone felt rich, but you weren't really rich. So we have to unrich ourselves by having a little, a little bear market yeah, for a little bit. <laughs> Fortunately, you, you gotta give it all back. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, because the the value of everything in reality is still whatever it was, but the dollar value seemed more. I don't know. You know, like and people are like, we're not due for a recession. Yeah, we we literally have to because yeah. otherwise we will Venezuela off into space or something. <laughs> so uh, let's not and do that. We don't want to Venezuela off into space. Trust me. No, <laughs> no, brother. These ball pythons real shortly if we do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I. Are there is, are there going to be plant vendors that are like super? nerd plant vendors like like oh, with yeah. tissue cultures or whatever and you can buy your tissue uh, like, you know what i mean like is it going to be that hardcore is it going to be more like who do we here's a cutting 
I mean, I don't know if we have anyone that does like specific tissue culture stuff. I had a guy that I like, was trying to get to come out. His name's Justin Jones. Um, I got into plants like six years ago. So I have like people that I just really know in the industry mm -hmm. that he's like tissue culturing species that are like super rare, super hard to do. So that kind of stuff. I really wanted him to come out. Um, maybe next, next show he will, because he'll see it and be like, Oh, this is what you meant. Cause I, I did, I did try to work with Potter and do something like this. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, it fizzled away a little bit. Like I think his model has worked for so long, like trying to influx like a plant portion of it was just going to be a lot of work. Um, yeah. So I, I wanted to get him, but we do have some like cool, like super nerdy people like Kujaba orchids. Like if you, have you ever talked to an orchid person? Like they're, they're very peculiar. I had an orchid professor. Okay. In, in college. And I was like, brother, I don't know. They're, they're different. Let's put it yeah. that way. Leviathan, thanks. Like I said, they're coming out to, to our show. So. Anyways. Yeah. I've been kind of ignoring chat. Sorry, chat. Uh, I'm just trying to like, ask coherent questions I, of my normal dribble you need to not read it because i lose track i think i did right. that a bit ago i like read a, a thing and i was like i don't know what that i don't know what i was talking about um which i i used to think i was really good at multitasking until i put on this show now i'm like i can't i can't talk no anymore. it turns out the part of your brain that processes language has to pick it's either listening to it or reading it and so like you could like fake look like you're paying attention but not I think it's safe for a really long time. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we're, it's it's going to be, I think it's going to be a fun, like a really fun show. That's our, our goal. Like the plant people we have, we have some, we worked really hard to get them. Um, yes, Tinley is the big show for the U.S. We're not the big show. <laughs> but there are shows that probably get doors that are Tinley-esque, but don't have the, the yeah uh, gravitas I, I, of I if, you, if you knew the real numbers of narbc and like potter I, I don't think potter now wants to ever say anything business related to troy or i which is fine like you we want to work together with everybody like i i would love to promote mickey there was a there's a local guy wyoming uh, that just did a new one mr critters i don't know if you saw his show no what is his show called Mr. Critter's Reptile Expo. Uh, oh, he did, in, yeah, literally he used his business name. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, uh, which is funny because uh, Robin made a joke and was like, this, the Sloan Extravaganza show to Troy. And <laughs> like, yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, it's like, no, I, I'm not. It was a one-day show? It was a one-day show. Okay. Um, so they did it on the weekend of Repticon here in Col Colorado. Um and we had some vendors that went up to that instead. He got 2,700 people through the door, which mm, there's only 137,000 people in Wyoming. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, and it was his first show. So uh, he's going to come down. He's excited. He's got a VIP ticket. He wants to come like hang out at the show. So he's doing a November show it, a little bit closer to Colorado. He's doing it in Cheyenne. So mm. I'll, I'll promote that. Like I want all of us to succeed. I want people that are in Fort Collins who are upset that there's a show in Castle Rock to be like, Hey, actually there's one in Cheyenne now. Like mm -hmm. I can go up there. I mean, it's not going to be the same as what we're doing because we're doing different things. Right. Right. Like we're doing plant, we're doing reptile, we're doing like, yeah, I think the, the hard part is like, so to, sometimes a new show to a new city will have like a good turnout and then it never comes back. And you're like, it was that just like the pent up demand? They saw it. They were kind of dissatisfied by what they saw because it was like the first version and we didn't have good vendors. So I think coming in stronger first yeah. time is better yeah. in general. But then some of these cities have just never had a reptile show ever. So they could have like a good. A this good was the first Wyoming show ever, like the entire state. <laughs> that's great that's, i'm in i'm in yeah um so Those... he, gillette is a little bit far north for me like mm -hmm. it, it's it was northern part of wyoming i'm like i i to take a weekend go up there and do that kind of stuff like it would have been a little hard for me to take that time but mm -hmm. like him doing cheyenne i think is going to be a a good good option especially 
there's a good population in Cheyenne. There's a good population in Fort Collins. Um, then you're going to get the Northern Wyoming people that are never, I, you know, they're not used to having a show. So why would they expect anything different? They're like, Oh, right. three hours away. That's a hell of a lot better than eight hours down to Colorado. So mm -hmm. I think that'll do well for them. Um, and it, it, it did. He was, he was really ec ecstatic about it. Like he was really stoked and we were excited to hear about it because we got to hear that like our show was talked about by everyone in the show. Mm -hmm. Like they were like, Oh, there's going to be a show down in Castle Rock. Like it's going to be this. So we were, we were excited by the vendors that were there that were promoting it as well. Like we want mm -hmm. this to be a, we're all, we're, we really are all working together. Like, mm -hmm vendors bending any show a, 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 someone opposing us show like that's that's sort of how we work we're all if you're breeding ball pythons you're literally selling to your opposition right like, do, do you think like the aquatics portion of the show because that to me like that seems like a, an easy aesthetic ad it's no competition or whatever and it's like another part. It's not loud like birds or pigs. I have to vent with pigs sometimes. Yeah. It's not as fun as you would think. No. <laughs> okay. So like, it would be cool to have like, I don't know. I, I'm like making shit up now, but like plants, fish, reptiles, like they're all quiet. There's no screaming. There's no dander, no feathers. So, <laughs> so if you have a beta and like axolotl people or something, you could do koi or something too. So, yeah, we have uh we have we have a beta. We have an axolotl vendor, um, Aquashella. Where's that at, Jen? Um, oh, Jen. Hi. I just sent you a snake. Um, but we like we ha so we have those vendors. We've had a lot of people ask about aquatics. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you should have more our venue sort of restricts a lot of stuff because we're, our space is not as big as we want it to be. Right. Like we can't advertise as everything. Like I think people have also been like, Oh, do you have inverts? Like, why don't you say that? Why don't you say that you have inverts there? I'm like, okay, well, we'll change the, the business name to all American reptile aquatics inverts. <laughs> yeah. I don't want you to change the name, but I'm thinking of like something kids would come look at and would, yeah. I don't know. People think they got their money's worth if there are more, classes of things there hypothetically it, even if it's not most of the show we had a we had a reef show so i was walking into reef people uh when we first like really got started going and handing them flyers being like hey can you hand these out and we had a reef store guy be like oh i want to vend i really want to do it like can you come out and i don't think it just worked out for him yeah. i would definitely like move into that model a little bit obviously i want to have I want to make sure that we're a little focused, you know, we don't want to end up being like a, a pet expo. Like, yeah, to me, it's too much. Yeah. Uh, like but in Colorado, it's hard. Like we have so many things that are not legal here. Like mm -hmm. you can't, can't have a monkey. You Like we couldn't have those almost fairground feeling educational shows because like you can't own a monkey. You can't have a kangaroo. You can't have all these oh. animals that like, you traditionally are like, hey, it's the petting zoo. Come over and pet the kangaroo. What you know the dumb ones? Like a baby goat, a bunny, uh, you know, like way over there, far away. I, I don't want, I don't want to vent next to pigs anymore. Let me be. I guess I could clear. do like, I could do like uh, one of the other buildings and I could just like have like 4-H people bring mm -hmm. stuff, just attract that crowd and they could just come in after they've gone and pet goats and pet yeah. rabbits. I mean, as long as they don't go touch a retic right after touching a rabbit or a goat. <laughs> yeah, please. Hand sanitizer your whole universe. Uh, please. We have showers. Please shower before you come in here because we don't need anyone getting bit. Gosh. Uh, yeah, don't touch any reptiles. Uh, let me just put it. No, I'm kidding, sort of. Uh, I just am tired of uh, snake mites. Uh, uh. I will, about, you know, the way that we've done reptile shows, I've never brought my home from a show. Like <sighs> me neither, but I have to like worry do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I have to think about them. I have to like give people the side eye when they like 
put their shit on my table at a show. Like right they set the their thing. crap down, and I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> Your stuff is not clean. Go away. You're nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. It, well, like you're trying to be nice too. Like you don't. Yeah, I don't say excuse me. You're nasty, but I want to say that. Yeah. Well, I always want to say those things. But like, <laughs> there are people that do say that. Like, get the off my stuff. But like, I have, I have, I, I feel bad because like a kid will be like, "Can I hold this?" And I'm like, "Oh, sorry, buddy." And give my little spiel. Like, they're out here all weekend. They're gonna be stressed out. Like, we don't know what's been floating around the show. Blah 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 blah. blah. Unless you're like, super yeah, you want to buy it, <sighs> brother. And then yeah. I so. And then I have like a hate hate relationship with the fucking photo photograph people. Oh yeah. Because a lot of times they can't control their animal because it's a whatever foot retake and they, they're not in a space that is conducive to like those photo sessions. They're in a normal booth. Yeah. So like the retake will be half in your booth, half in their booth. Well, It'll be knocking stuff <laughs> over. It'll be like dribbling whatever. I don't and I'm just like Please have your own section. Like, go away if you're gonna do that. <laughs> it's the worst. Well, and that's like so. We're we're gonna set up like a photo booth at our um, show, and maybe maybe if there's people that are like, oh, I want I want people to take pictures with, like, can, you can take it over here into the corner, away from everybody. And- yeah, like a selfie station, but for yeah. like, a, a, yeah, yes, over there. Like, yeah. I love selfie stations. Those are great for social media. Tell yourself, great, good. That, like, that Cheyenne show, Rep. Mr. Critters, is November? Uh, I can November. look it up hypothetically. I mean, I, I, I have tried not to stare at my phone, which I have a million. Yeah, yeah. November 2nd. Okay. And 3rd. And 3rd. It's going to be a two day. Oh, he's doing a two day? He's doing a two day this time. Yeah, he wanted it's to. It's interesting. Start- that you guys chose a three day, like, I mean, VIP can come when vendors are doing setup, which I think should happen more. But yeah. was that because you you like that platform from doing other shows with that? It's or... I think it was more exclusive for the VIP. Like, I think there's other shows that sell a VIP ticket, and they're like, you get in an hour early on Saturday. And I'm like, we got. That's not enough exclusive. Yeah. 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 We got to offer something a little better than like, hey, come in an hour early and get to see stuff. So uh, vendors, like, they don't have to be set up on Friday night. I get it. Like, I have a normal big boy job. Mm-hmm. And so I get getting work off and doing that kind of stuff is hard. I mean, it's easier for me to punch out because I own the company. But, like, for other people, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, so Saturday morning is fine if you're like, hey, I'm, I can't make it. Like you're gonna, we're gonna set up. But we wanted to offer something a little bit different. Like to, to Colorado folk, they've never seen it. So our, we've actually had a, a lot of VIP tickets. Um, usually when we sell tickets and it pops through, like I'm expecting, like oh, we're just getting this. Like it's a lot of VIP. So I think people are excited about that. Yeah, it's it's. It's different enough that I think not, it's not different for a big show, but it's making you look like a big show. Like you're putting on the pants of a big show by doing that, which it makes it more exciting to me. Yeah. yeah. And something that we're going to do like a little bit different. So we, we booked the venue for Thursday because we're like, we want to mm-hmm. be up and ready for vendors to show up at, I think, I think we have it listed as 1 PM uh, Friday, but they can get there at noon. I'm not going to turn people away. I'm not going to, like, if they get there at 11 a.m., I'm not going to be like, leave, please, because I'll be there. Mm-hmm. Um, but we we have Thursday night. We're going to do, a, like, a pizza and beer thing if people are here on Thursday at the venue. Like, they can come down and they can get some pizza. They can have some beer. We can hang out as vendors. They get, can get to know each other. Like, we have some people that have never been to a Colorado show coming out, like you, like, you know, a Colorado show. Um, Jason Amos has never been to a Colorado show. Um, and has never been to a Colorado show. Like, how can yeah. pro? Jack Parpart, like, yeah. Um, I was talking to Marshall, and he was, he was telling me about, I think it was the Fort Collins Show Me and the Reptile Nation were pretty good. And I'm like, they sound. Like a like a market that wants to buy stuff. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. So I was like, I've always been thinking about it, but like, 
then they canceled the reptile nation and i was like i don't know what to do about it no. yeah and then you showed up so good job yeah that was, <laughs> that, that was that was that was the goal we wanted to make sure that we like filled in a spot that was going to be missed like hey right reptilian nation did a good job when he came out i he you know may rub some people the wrong way but he did a good job and mm -hmm. it, yeah I, yeah to me the, the reptile nation circuit even though my the one i did was not that good i think it was like a location problem and they didn't even redo it anymore with the fort worth one yeah but the, but the idea of big important controlled number of types of vendors so that like the guest experience is good is is the correct way to do it for a, some some show circuits yeah. and some can be small but like it makes more sense to run 12,000 people through a door uh, than to run 300. Yeah. For me. Our, for so me. Our, <laughs> our small shows that don't have great advertising, it's like 3,000 people through the door. Um, right. That's pretty good. I'm impressed. And yeah. sometimes you can have 2,000 people through the door and they all want to buy something. So that's also good. Like yeah. all of those are good in different ways for different shows, but you just got to pick what's right for you. But we need more, more, choices i think for like a, a long distance run Once we, that was we did like diversity we pushed like big time like we were trying to bring in some people that we would have been like this like we, we want to have something niche and unique and cool that gets attention we don't want just to invite every ball python guy sorry like we mm -hmm. you know that like, you're cool but we didn't want to like bring you in and that's all that was at the show. So like we did reach out to like herp time. Like we were like, Hey, Arnold, like come out. And it, it just didn't, I just don't think it really worked for him. Like logistically, I'm like all your weird little spherodactylus geckos and anoles. Like, what do you think it would take to get him to come out? You know I what I mean? Like more time. Okay. More time to get ready. Yeah. And I think, I think a first show sometimes can like, be a little leery for people, right? Like, like, oh, you're first yeah. out there. Like, I don't know, but uh, Colorado's economy is pretty big. I mean, mm -hmm. if you've ever watched the news of how much our stupid houses cost these days, like, there's a big influx of money that is here. And I think the industry really is moving in towards a few different ways. Like, isopods got huge because they're small, mm -hmm. even in places. Herp times way that he's doing stuff. These tiny little geckos can stay inside small cages, and it's a big cage to them. Mm -hmm. like, that's a very good niche. I'm like, dude, you would have done so well out here. Like Colorado folk have to keep stuff in their house. Like we can't can't put a big old cage outside. Like, right. Like nothing's gonna survive out there. So people want that. They want to like have something sitting at their desk that's like this three inch reef gecko mm -hmm. the biggest it gets and i love it and i i think it would have done really well for him, and but. he's a big he's a relatively big social media oh, following yeah. oh, too yeah. so like did you think about also courting influencers that are not like breeder influencers but are like so the only reason that snake discovery is not at our show is because uh they were going to dallas Oh, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but would they want to come to a future hypothetical show? Uh, They've expressed interest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously, September one doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. That part is really tough because I don't know if I want to give up a Dallas table either. I know. Yeah, we. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's so Troy, close for me that it's like oh, my yeah. home show or whatever. Well, Troy. Obviously, he's driving down to Dallas this weekend. And, like mm -hmm. he doesn't want it. And he, he, yeah, I think he told Potter he's like, "I won't. I'll send. I'll send Lisa there." Like, <laughs> yeah, because you can't do substitutions anymore or subletting tables for any well, RPC. So like, if, I think you may be able. Oh, Justin Lee, just okay. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to speak too much to that, but like, if that's true or not. But I, I, I'm pretty positive that it said that. On it was just Tim Lee is what he was pushing to make sure. Okay. That, you can't like he's like i'm not good at it. and i get it like now that we have a wait list for us i'm like that, that's hard yeah i mean everything i don't i'm not mad about anything brian does uh 
Because, like, it's his show. You got to make it the way you think it would make the most people happy. And sometimes that makes some people unhappy. And so whatever way you guys decide to do it is also fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think yeah, we, we all have to deal with the stuff, like, that we don't want to deal with, too. Like, I don't want to deal with fire marshals. I don't want to deal with PACFA. Right. I don't want to deal with so much of the logistical terrible stuff of this show, but I have to. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately that trickles down to people. Like, I don't want to ask anyone for taxes. <laughs> like, right. Explain how you're doing that. We okay. talked about well, Colorado, you're going to, vendors are going to get an email today. So Colorado does it a little different. So state of Colorado wants a multiple events tax license, which is easy to get. It's like $10. So we're going to send that link. They'll get it. All that. Um, I have to send your info, info, to, info to the state. So um, we don't want to be, I don't want to be those guys, but I have to, because then I'll get shut down and then none of us get anything. Um, and then Castle Rock is going to do a tax as well, but they make me collect it. Unless you are a savvy business person and you want to take care of it yourself, you are welcome to go on the Castle Rock's website. I'll, we'll send out a link as well. And you can file for the permit. It's 10 bucks. I recommend that kind of stuff to people all the time. Like I do like with all my taxes and stuff like that, do your own taxes instead of just giving away your money willy nilly and saying, you be like, you're good to go. But I know most people aren't going to do that. So I have, I'm going to hand out a form for Castle Rock. It, it's going to say, Hey, here's 4% of what you've charged. Like put it in this envelope and I'm going to take it to Castle Rock myself. So but you think people should apply with the city of Castle or County? If you were a good, if you're a good business person, I think you should be doing all of the tax per permits, all the sales permits, all the things yourself, because you can apply write-offs. You can apply everything yourself. If you're at a show, all you're doing is saying, this is how much I made. Here's 4% of it. Right. Like mm -hmm. when it's weird that like the state doesn't collect for each municipality. Yeah, like every other state, they should really. Isn't that weird? Oh, it's I like in Texas, Oklahoma, Washington, wherever you just like. Here it is. This is the situs of the pop up event, and it populates city, county, state, and then you're just like, okay, I owe the, and then they just zip it out. Yeah. So even the show coordinator. So our fairgrounds is a Douglas County, like it's a county owned place, and they are. Um, sorry, someone's walking in here. Um, sorry. No, it's not you. Um, so they are like, they're a county owned place. They're making the money off the venue. They're making the money off of tickets. I have to give a percentage of tickets, by the way. Um, so they're making this money and even the coordinators, like, I hate that Castle Rock does this. Like, I hate that they don't have an online, like easy multiple event state license thing that they'd want you to just have a permit. So 10 bucks, you can go on, you can do your own taxes. I mean, all of us should be because mm -hmm. we are spending money on shows. We're spending money on travel. We're spending money on staying in places. We should be doing every write off we possibly can, but mm -hmm. most of us don't. I mean, everyone always thinks like the event, the show promoter handing this thing out. And in Colorado, it's been a very well-known thing, but the promoter handing something out is like, Hey, like take, Give us money for this. They're like, oh, they're just pocketing it. I'm like, I don't, I don't want yeah, to. know. Do <laughs> I told them I didn't want to do it. I told Castle Rock, I was like, I don't want to ask these people for this, like, because mm -hmm. they think I'm taking it, and I don't want that money. Like, I don't want to deal with it. So that's a crappy part of this that I have to do. But All right. So the email's going out today. Can you yeah. file with Castle Rock digitally? That's my like biggest question. Because St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a sales tax. You can't file digitally. Yeah, you <laughs> and you're like, fuck you, Missouri. What you get country? a sales tax portal. Yep. So you'll have a sales tax <laughs> portal that you'll create and you'll make the permit and you can do it all digitally. Okay. Thank God. All right. Last minor nitpick. Yeah. What can we do about a non AI generated logo? Because <laughs> I have a lot of artist friends. They're very like. I know. I know. You so know, they're. You know, we could we could pay a cool human to make we one. We did so. Our 
logo now has been remastered by an artist. Mm -hmm. um, well, you sent me the one with the jumbled text. Did I? From the AI machine. Oh, shit. That's my fault. <laughs> no, it's okay. I found like I, I found a higher enough res one floating around on the internet. And, it, and I knew it was AI to begin with because it has an AI like dead. So dead, dead. when we started, my wife is the one doing the marketing and stuff like that. Um, I've had a lot of comments and angry folks about that. Uh, we didn't have anyone we knew um, that did stuff and we should have just searched. But we didn't know what we wanted this logo to look like. Like we didn't even really fully have a name yet, like mm -hmm. designing stuff. So Troy, Lauren and I, this came together really fast. Like, okay, that's okay. I, this is a growing opportunity, I think. Cause it it, you'll get the heat. Oh yeah. You know, cause people, some people are, you know, hot on the collar for like oh, anybody using any AI anywhere. And mm -hmm. maybe that can inspire uh, the well, next. Laura sure. from Grey Ghost Creations has been making us now stuff now. So we okay. now That's good. our logo's been made and remastered by a artist that's on there. There is one. I can't get the event on Facebook to change the cover photo for some reason. So there's a, a dumb AI thing on there that gets a lot of hate and... <laughs> Well, well, AI can't handle snakes. I don't know if you noticed. I guess it can't handle a lot of things, but like it doesn't know how to generate them in a way that they look like a snake to me. So every AI snake is sort of grading yeah. on my sanity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So our, our, our logo, our main logo, the only one that we're using now has been remade by an artist. And she. So they like copied over the snake? She like drew it herself. Yeah. She, okay. she looked at it and drew it. She didn't trace it, but she looked at it and drew it out and did all that kind of stuff. If you go find Grey Ghost Creations, she does really good work. Um, and she made us another little, like, I don't want to call it logo. It's like a artwork, essentially like um, an ARBC does with Adeline. Um, like, she made us... A or shirts or whatever? Yeah, like, she made us, like, a Bolin's Python... Uh, plant combo thing so no we're we're working with an artist now but okay. yeah. ai is a trap right oh, it's right. like oh it's so convenient but it's actually like its own faustian bargain that gets you in trouble yeah uh yeah you know no, it accidentally I'm... generated like weird stuff in the corner you didn't notice until you made shirts of it or what it's a trap uh, just every we time everybody we, yeah we didn't make any of the one that doesn't have a head <laughs> all right i feel like this has been a good and productive episode please remind everybody where uh the show is when the show is and if they want to get on the vendor waitlist for hypothetical september show yes so all american reptile plan expo we are in castle rock colorado at the moment we call it all american because maybe it'll be everywhere who knows um not that many places but if you go to our website, if you are like, hey, I want to be a vendor or anything like that, you can go to our Denver show info and then vendor registration. Um, should be pretty pretty easy to find. Uh, we don't have prices on there at the moment because we didn't want people booking and trying to get in that are on a wait list now. So uh, that's all sort of there. If you go on there, you just say, hey, this is how many tables I usually want. Um, we're not changing our prices. It's just not on there for reasons of, hey, I'm going to send you money just to get it. Um, Go there. We have it April 26th, 27th, and 28th. Our VIP is Friday night and Saturday morning. Um, regular hours on Sunday from 10 to 5 p.m. Yeah. Perfect. And where can they find you if they want to buy a ball python? Nowhere. Don't buy myself. <laughs> uh, Sloan Reptiles. Uh, also on Morph Market, but you can find me on Instagram, uh, Facebook. You can call me. You can text me. I'll I'll actually answer the phone when you call. I, you might hear power tools, but I'll answer. I definitely did. Yeah, uh, I was yeah. like, this man's doing work. What am I doing? Yeah, which I'm 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 actually shocked. I don't have seven thousand text messages from right. Thank right. God, only a minute away around the corner. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your time. I think it will be fun and good. And t 
hotels are pretty reasonably priced in that like immediate vicinity because it's not like in downtown or something. So if somebody wants to fly out and have like a quickie uh, Colorado vacay, it's it's like a good a good reasonably priced vacay, and it should be yeah. fun. And Castle Rock's a pretty beautiful place to actually come and vacay as well. So you might be able to see some cool snakes and plants, but you can go on a good hike up at Castlewood Canyon up the road and mm -hmm. you, you'll get the car. I'm excited about that part. Like maybe front loading a day or something yeah. next time or whatever to go like have time to hike or something Friday morning. Awesome. That would be awesome. There's not a lot of mysteries in Castle Rock. Um, Castle Rock, you might, uh, to... you might have missed it earlier, but they are uh, a little bit behind on that kind of stuff. So you can drive up the road and get stuff easily. But well, how far is like downtown Denver or whatever? Forty minutes without like traffic. 30. If there's not traffic, it's like thirty minutes. Okay, that's reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> I drive further than that to go to the FedEx. So, yep. All right. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you, Nick. Of course. We're saying goodbye now. Okay. See y'all in Dallas, baby. <laughs> Thanks, Woo.